Once upon a time in my early 20s, I had this brilliant idea to take up pottery. I know. But there was something about the thought of transforming a formless lump of clay into something beautiful, right? Something useful. This and this it just drew me in. Plus, I mean, how hard could it be, right? <laughs> I mean, it's just spinning a wheel smeared with some wet clay and voila, the promise of something beautiful. Easy peasy, at least I thought. So I found this quaint little pottery studio. It was bathed in sunlight, filled with earthy smell of wet clay, exactly what you think a traditional pottery studio would look like. And every week I would join other budding artisans and Learn from this teacher who had this incredible magic touch. It was as if her hands were just born to shape clay. I mean, they probably were made out of clay themselves. Now, before I go further, let's be clear. Picasso with a lump of clay? I was not. My early attempts were more abstract art than fine china. There were mugs that leaned like they had one too many cups of coffee themselves. My bowls, well, they resembled crushed hats more than anything you'd want to eat cereal from. Every piece was this unpredictable thing, teetering on the brink of disaster until the very last moment. Truth be told, I collected many, many paperweights that summer. But... I had a blast. It was a riot. And for every pot that resembled a squash tomato or a mug that could barely hold a secret, let alone coffee, I just laughed it off. I mean, I actually was enjoying it, to be truthful. It was like being in the middle of a comedy show where the punchline was definitely my latest ceramic creation. In the end, I know, I know, my true calling is playing the piano. Not wrestling with clay. I will admit, the piano keys are a little bit more forgiving of my mistakes, while clay, as it turns out, not so much. But as I tap away at the piano keys, I can't help but look back at those pottery days and just chuckle a little. And while I sip my morning coffee from a mug that isn't so lopsided as I've left that to the professionals, I'm reminded that life, like pottery, isn't about striving for perfection, but embracing the beauty of the unexpected, the quirky, the wonderfully imperfect, and yes, even having a little fun while doing it. But if you would, Entertain me here for a moment. Think of life as a piece of pottery and a world that is obviously dominated by perfectionism. You might imagine that this pottery, it needs to be flawless. It has to be perfect, right? A smooth surface, a uniform color and symmetrical shapes, not a single crack or a blemish anywhere. It's a beautiful yet kind of intimidating vision. It's what you strive for each day, spinning the wheel faster and faster, smoothing out every tiny imperfection, holding your breath for fear that the smallest error just might shatter your masterpiece. But this pursuit, this relentless, never-ending pursuit of this perfect pot can leave you feeling exhausted and stressed and unsatisfied. Each day, we sit at this wheel, obsessing about every detail, right? Your hands are aching from the effort, your back is tired, and your hair is speckled with pieces of clay. Even the smallest cracks send you into despair as you feel like you failed at everything. The joy of creating something fun is now overshadowed by the fear of imperfection. Fun, imperfect. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be this way. So, today, 
We're going to sit at the wheel and we're going to reshape not what's in our hands, but what's in our mind. I'm Chad Lawson and let's comment down in three, two, one. Wabi Sabi. Yes, you heard me correctly. Wabi Sabi. Say it. It's actually kind of fun. Imagine instead a different approach to your pottery, one inspired by the Japanese concept of Wabi Sabi that embraces the beauty of the imperfect. See, this time you welcome the slight unevenness, the unique crackle in the glaze or the shape that maybe isn't necessarily <laughs> perfectly shaped. With this concept that the Japanese have called wabi-sabi, you see each of these flaws as a part of the pot's unique story, its unique character. And just like this pottery, our lives are full of imperfections, and that's okay. In this episode, we're going to explore how the stress of perfectionism, that unyielding pursuit of an impeccable pot or piece of pottery can leave us feeling drained and empty, and how we can learn to embrace our own version of wabi-sabi. You see, those lopsided mugs from my pottery days, they weren't just entertaining misshapes. They became symbols of a lesson that I, to this day, carry with me. The lesson that it's okay to embrace the imperfect. And more than that, it's something to be celebrated. Well, what do you mean, celebrated? Why would I celebrate something that isn't right to begin with? Well, who says we're looking at it in the right way? At first glance, you might think those mugs had missed the mark. I mean, a coffee mug that wobbles at the slightest breeze might not be your go-to choice for a morning coffee. And it's probably not the first gift idea that comes to mind, well, unless you're planning a, a joke. But when you look a little closer, there's something wonderfully unique about it. There's a charm to its off-kilter stance, the way it stands out from the crowd of perfectly rounded mugs. Isn't that unpredictability, that subtle rebellion against the norm? I mean, isn't it all kind of, I don't know, refreshing? It's the same with our everyday life. We often get caught up in this pursuit of perfection, trying to mold our lives to match this ideal picture that we have in our heads. But life isn't a perfect circle. It's full of bumps and ridges and twists, just like those pieces of pottery that I used to make. Life wobbles. <laughs> Say it with me. Life wobbles. And just as we can find beauty and charm in a lopsided mug or bowl that's seen better days, we can also appreciate the imperfect in ourselves. Those imperfections, those, those things that don't go according to plan, those things add depth. Those things add character and even a bit of whimsy to our story. So I want to talk about this idea of seeking the imperfect, of learning to see the beauty and the uneven edges of our lives. Because sometimes the most captivating story isn't the one that follows a straight, predictable path, but the one that takes some unexpected detours along the way. Here, let me show you how. First things first. Throw the clay. Decision making. In pottery, the very first step is often the most liberating, yet also the scariest. You take a lump of clay and you just throw it. You literally just throw it onto the wheel, ready to shape it. So if we take this approach to how we make decisions, right, we often get caught in this analysis paralysis, the striving to make the perfect choice, when sometimes what we need to do is just throw the clay, make a decision, and shape it as we go. Yes, there might be bumps and cracks along the way. Actually, I take that back. 
there will be bumps and cracks along the way, but that's where the character comes in. Remember, every great pot or coffee cup or bowl, it starts as a lump of clay and a leap of faith. I'm going to say that again. Every great piece of pottery starts as a lump of clay and a leap of faith. So when you find yourself standing at the crossroads, unsure which path to take, think of that lump of clay. It may seem messy and unformed, but it has so much potential. When you throw it onto the wheel, you're not just making a choice. You're opening up a world of possibilities. And sure, as you start shaping it, you may encounter those bumps, those inconsistencies, But instead of seeing them as obstacles, I invite you to see them as opportunities for character. Each bump, each crack adds a touch of personality to your decision. And it's through this process that the lump of clay transforms into a work of art. And similarly, it's through making a choice and embracing the process, bumps and all, that our decisions become the meaningful steps we take in life. Throw the clay, take the leap, and watch as you shape your story in the most unexpected and beautiful ways. When trying to decide, throw the clay. Number two, this is one of my favorite ones, and I love this word. It's one of my favorite words ever. I use it all the time. Number two, glaze of grace, self-compassion. Glaze in pottery serves a dual purpose, and it's really amazing, to be honest. It brings out the pot's beauty and also fills in the tiny cracks, which is giving it strength. Now, think of self-compassion as your personal glaze. When you stumble, when you're not perfect, when you... Make a mistake. Rather than criticizing yourself, I want you to coat that moment with a glaze of grace. Like, stop what you're doing. Literally close your eyes and imagine that you're glazing whatever that moment is with forgiveness, with kindness, with grace, with compassion for yourself. Recognize the beauty in your effort, right? Acknowledge the crack, but also understand that it's part of the process that's ultimately making you stronger. Each time you treat yourself with kindness, you're adding another layer of glaze, which is enhancing your beauty and resilience, but it's also, again, filling in those tiny cracks, which is giving you strength. Here, think about it this way. Without glaze, pottery would just be porous, be fragile. It might look okay, but it won't be able to hold up to the demands of daily use. Now that glaze gives it a layer of protection, a a shield of sorts, allowing it to stand strong even when filled to the brim. That's exactly what self-compassion does for us. When we stumble, when we mess up, or when we fall short of our expectations, We often forget how important it is to be kind to ourselves. We overlook the fact that in these moments of struggle, we just need a glaze of grace more than anything. So applying that layer of self-compassion, it helps us see past the moment of failure. And it helps us appreciate the effort that we're putting into it. We pause, we forgive ourselves, and then we appreciate. And it's a way to acknowledge our being human, to remind ourselves that it's okay to be a work in progress. We are all perfectly imperfect pieces of pottery. And each layer of kindness that we apply not only makes us more resilient, but it also highlights the beauty of this journey that we're on. So the next time you feel like you've missed the mark, Don't forget, reach for your glaze of grace. Treat yourself with kindness. Remember, each crack is just another part 
of your beautiful pattern filled in with this glorious glaze of self-compassion. And then finally, the last step, the kiln of growth, or the way I look at it, learning. The kiln, and this is where, for those that don't know much about pottery, this is where the pottery is fired, right? And this is where the real transformation happens. It's intense, it's hot, and it's where a fragile piece of work becomes sturdy and functional. So what I'd like for you to do is to see your challenges, to see your imperfect situations in life. See them as your personal kiln. They might be uncomfortable and even painful, but it's also where you grow the most. The flaws, the mistakes, and the failures, these are your raw materials. They are your teachers. Did you hear that? Your flaws, your mistakes, your failures, they are your teachers. Embrace them and you'll emerge stronger, more sturdy, more resilient, just like a piece of pottery fresh out of the kiln. Now, let's think about what really happens in a kiln, right? Have you ever seen one before? Now, in a kiln, it's not just about applying heat to clay. It's more than that. It's a process of transformation that's fueled by intense conditions. Hmm, sound familiar? The clay doesn't just endure the heat. It absorbs it. It reacts to it and comes out the other side fundamentally changed. And what's amazing is that this once fragile lump of clay, once it emerges as a sturdy, durable piece of pottery that's ready to serve the purpose, you then see what its purpose is, right? And that's the thing about our personal kilns in life. Those challenging times, those tough situations, they're not there to simply test our endurance. They are opportunities for transformation. The heat of adversity can be intense, yes, but remember, it's in the kiln where the clay becomes a pot. Oh, I'm going to say that again. It's in the kiln where the clay becomes a pot. Every flaw, every mistake, every failure is like that heat, not a setback. It's a crucial part of the process. There are raw materials that fuel your transformation. Teachers that guide your growth. And when you embrace them, you come out stronger. You come out more resilient and more prepared for whatever life, are you ready, pours into you. Did you hear that? When you embrace these moments of learning, these transformations, you come out stronger, you come out more resilient, and you are more prepared for whatever life pours into you. Just like a pot fresh out of the kiln, you're not defined by the heat you've endured, but by the strength you've gained from it. So, welcome your kiln moments because it's through them that you become a true masterpiece ready and able to serve your purpose and whatever is poured into you that then you can pour into others i want you to remember this the beauty of pottery doesn't come from perfection but in its uniqueness from its journey on the pottery wheel and from its time in the kiln. And then just like us, our beauty lies in our unique imperfections and our choices and our self-compassion, our growth through difficult seasons. Seek the imperfect. When you seek the imperfect, you're shaping a life that's as rich and as beautiful as a well-crafted piece of pottery. I want you to remember you are the artisan of your life. You are the person sitting at that well with the clay. 
And each lump of clay, each decision is a fresh start. Just waiting to see what is formed. Each glaze of grace you show yourself strengthens your resilience and highlights the beauty in your journey. And each calm moment that you encounter is not an obstacle, but an opportunity for growth and for transformation. You're not meant to be perfect. You're not. You're not meant to be a perfect, flawless pot, identical to every other. You're meant to be you. Uniquely so, with your own shape and your own glaze, your own story, handmade. Embrace those wabi sabi moments. Embrace your beautiful imperfections and watch. Watch as you transform into a masterpiece as wonderfully unique as the life you're living. So, as you step back to the wheel of life, I want you to remember, throw the clay boldly. Throw it. Throw the clay. Glaze yourself with grace. And embrace your calm moments. In the end, it's not about creating the perfect piece of pottery, but about loving the uniquely beautiful masterpiece that you are. And, of course, during all this, as I did <laughs> that summer in my 20s, enjoy it. Enjoy the process. Life, just like pottery, is more about the making than the end product. There were so many times I would just almost be there and something would fall apart. And I would laugh. Sure, I'd be frustrated. But looking back on it now, it was fun. It's about the joy of shaping. It's about the wisdom that comes from these imperfections. And it's about the growth and the heat, the challenges. Embrace it all. Embrace it all. Take a breath. Give yourself a compassionate smile and get back to the wheel. Life's waiting to be shaped by your hands. Keep creating. Keep growing. Most importantly, keep embracing the beauty of your wonderfully imperfect self. For more episodes, concert dates, or to send me some delicious chocolate chip cookies, visit gometdownpodcast.com. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer, pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. Now, before we part ways, I want to remind you that the views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and not intended to serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis is rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Please seek the advice of a licensed physician or therapist for any medical or emotional concerns. I'm not a licensed therapist or a physician, but I am an empath by nature, and I hope this and future podcast episodes can aid your emotional needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, visit commentdownpodcast.com. And if you enjoy this podcast and want to support the time, the person involved, and content you hear each week, please consider pitching in 2 or $3 a month. Your contribution will help keep this podcast ad-free. Visit commentdownpodcast.com, look for the white coffee cup with the heart in the center, or scan the QR code at the bottom of the page. Again, commentdownpodcast.com. Remember, be kind to your mind, and join me next week as we comment down.